Business Act Nigeria operates in a global setting, which means that different kinds of innovations must be adopted within our systems to enable our businesses to thrive. When our business thrives, the economy obviously will do better, and these are part of the essence of why we have this wonderful program, which we are going to be exploring one of those concepts. You're welcome. This is Business Matters. My name is Stephen Ipalabo Lawson. Because of the COVID, a lot of businesses have begun to use different systems to enable their businesses become much more alive. Some of those systems themselves will either help them to be excellent in what they do or they obviously will find themselves in the failure aspect of it. How we are going to help ourselves to be able to be successes is part of what we are going to be exploring on today's edition of this program. Let's have a business update. Hey beautiful, your eyes, your smile are all begging me to take you home tonight. Now reading page three. <laughs> Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. As it's our culture on business matters, we invite a distinguished professional to help us do justice to the topic of the day. And today we are looking at Agile and the transformation of the Nigerian business landscape. And joining me in the studio is no other person than an international business agility coach and trainer for enterprise agility adoption at the Agile Advisor Africa. She is a management consultant who has spent over 20 years across Africa, Middle East, United States and Canada in several industries such as banking, insurance, telecommunications, entertainment, non-profit, utilities, education, legal, agriculture, pharmaceutical, and of course, IT. In her words, she says, I believe that being agile is about a state of heart beyond being about a mere state of mind. It is this heart that makes transformation happen and evolves until it becomes an organic interwoven part of a company's culture, structure, and employees' default behavior. She is the chairperson of Aja Practitioners Association of Nigeria, the convenors of the annual Aja Nigeria Conference. Please join me as I make welcome Mrs. Abiodun Oshoba, fondly called Abe. How are you? Thank you, Stephen. It's good to have you again. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Now, straight to the cross of our, our conversation. Everybody keeps talking about Agile. Agile as a mindset, Agile as either a management you know, model or Agile as a framework. What exactly is Agile? Agile is a mindset. Great. End of story. Okay. It's not, a, <laughs> it's, it's not about a framework or a tool. Um, it's not about that. It's a framework. It's, an, uh, it's a mindset. It's a way of working. Um, Adopting the Agile mindset transforms the way you work, the way you organize work, the way you collaborate, uh, your organization's culture, and uh, strategy, approach to doing things. 
running business which eventually would lead to saving money saving time you know improving performance employee engagement um, return on investment going up and so many other things as a result of embracing the agile mindset now a lot of people wonder if agile mindsets as you've explained it to be um, is so much more another aspect of project management or are there obviously two different fields or basically interwoven agile mindset look at it as a big umbrella project management framework or approach is inside this big umbrella there are so many practices so project management framework is seen as one of the many ways of expression of work in an agile way and so project management used to have a lot of uh, traditional approach you know traditional way of working but then even in the last five years they have also so the PMI Institute have also moved away from that traditional stuff to embrace the agility, which is the agile mindset, and they've infused it in a lot of their certifications, their programs, their training, and then even in the workplace, you begin to see organizations who were practicing project management have now also embraced the agile mindset. Well, my question is going to be, um, a lot of people oftentimes wonder if agile is not just a generic term, mm. because sometimes in our research, we understood that there was something, I mean, that's also part of your own background, the enterprise agile, you have financial agile, you have different forms of agile. Does, yes. does this also apply to agile in public service? Yes. So agility okay. um, is broad, right? It has, it started with uh, software developers, you okay. know. Um, originally in the days of Macintosh and Ford, um, he would, as a business owner, you would talk to somebody who is in a developer to say, okay, I want this, I want that. And that was the simple, you know, relationship that existed. But it wasn't sustainable. And so over the years, the people who were getting the brunt of the work are the, the technology people, the software developers, the developers. And they, they, they constantly are always looking for ways to improve their delivery, you know, how to get the job done. And so it wasn't uh, a surprise when uh, 17 software developers modified the Agile Manifesto, what is our guiding principle today in helping us do work in different aspects. And so people seem to think that Agile or Agility is affiliated only with technology, okay. not at all. Uh, but over the last 20, 21 years, it has found its way within the shores of many aspects. So there's um, uh, agile marketing, there's agile sales, there's agile procurement, there's agile uh, finance, there's uh, uh, hardware, agile hardware, uh, there's, you know, there's um, business agility, there's the enterprise agility, which is what I'm involved in. And, you know, not only in the different aspects of an organization, but also in an economy. And that's where you find that in the public sector. Okay. And my examples to that is that White House practices Agile. Oh, great. Right? Great. And also the Ghana police. This is information that's available on YouTube. Uh, they are, you know, moving towards being number four police service in the world. Oh, we, we, they, I think we need to adopt or follow through. <laughs> they are that. practicing agile. So, <laughs> public service, public sector, um, you know, agile for all. Does that does that also help in terms of uh, um, in the management of cost, uh, and as well as because you mentioned the word value, and value in my own mind looks Money. at the bottom line. Correct. And so, uh, if you adopt agile mindset as an organization. You obviously will see a situation whereby your cost is far lower and then your income or revenue is higher. Would Correct. that be a case? Fantastic. That is uh, a given. You know, the bottom line will show for it. Uh, once Would that be immediate or obviously a long oh, time? No, I won't say a long time. Over a period of time, if done right. Okay. If done right. I, I've done work with so many organizations, you know, hands-on work with so many organizations physically in Nigeria here. And I would say depending on the industry, depending on the type of organization, depending on their current environment, I, you can begin to see changes as quickly as three to six months. Oh, that's quite, that's quite impressive then. That's quite impressive. That's quite impressive. A, a lot of times in our research, we hear things like Scrum Masters, we hear things like some other of those terminology. Could you, would you mind expatiating on some of this? What, what are the different levels? I mean, if you're thinking of a career change and you want to be able to be an agile expert, mm. what, are we sh what should we be looking at? 
So um, I'm sure hearing about project managers, you know, in the traditional workplace uh, is not new, True. right? And so, and, and so the, the concept of uh, a scrum master or a product owner or an agile coach is new in today's world in Nigerian businesses. Uh, but what they specifically do is, you know, they help to navigate, they help to facilitate uh, the work, the agile task, the mindset, you know, create that environment, you know, creating a psychological safety, bringing all the fundamentals, everything that you need to make sure that you, you are agile as an organization, you are agile as a team or, you know, as a business. So all these people, they play different roles, right? However, a lot of people in Nigeria, we don't have people playing those roles. And so okay. for somebody who wants to do a career change, you know, they, they are able to right now, thanks to our organization, they are able to step into uh, a brand new role. Um, you know, of course, you leverage your existing skills, your existing knowledge, and you know, how far you've come. You, you leverage some of those things, and you can actually do a transfer of those skills because majority of the skills that we currently use and currently have can be, you know, transferred easily to transforming you into that role. So as a Scrum Master, you're working with teams, helping them become better. People like Mike Zuckerberg for Facebook, I'm telling you, he hired CEOs and he has all those great type of people who are doing the business, running of the business for him, but he remains as the chief product owner of this organization. Okay. The chief product owner, the product owner, it constantly ensures a return on investment of the product, product constantly focuses on the product to ensure that this product is transforming. This product, we created a, a bottle right now, people can drink. Maybe the next thing we want to do is give it a handle, right? Maybe the next thing we want to do is put a bottom on it so that it can stand. Different variations of this product is what kind of gives you that return on investment, constantly improves the value and tells the customer that you have them in mind. Mm. When a customer sees an organization that cares, they're always there. And the last role is the, is the agile coach that I mentioned, and that person coaches the teams or the executives, the leadership, or the entire organization, ensuring that they are agile, right? They are on an agile journey, constantly you know, thinking of all the tools, all the practices, their values, and how they are responsive in their, in, in their environment and all, all right. of those things. You, you obviously have a total handle on this agile mindset thing, no doubt about it. But we're going to go on a short break. As soon as we're back, the conversation will continue. Viewers, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, this is Business Matters. After the short break, we're going to be back with the conversation. Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. All right, if you've just joined us, you're welcome. This is Business Matters, and in the studio with me is no other person than Mrs. Abiodun Oshoba. She is with the Aja Advisor Africa, as well, so she is the chairperson of Aja Practitioner Association of Nigeria. Before we went on a break, we were looking at Aja and the transformation of the Nigerian business landscape as a topic. Um, um, Abby, one of the things that is very dear to my heart is the subject of women. Mm. Um, we know that the month of March, for example, by the United Nations is being you know, designated a women's month. We can't even argue with that. And so diversity as not just an, a management concept, but as a way of life has become one of the things we must always push you know, in a front, um, front burner. How does that benefit uh, in terms of when you are bringing Agile and the woman, you know? Are there opportunities or places for the woman to be able to embrace the Agile mindset as a career step or even as a business engagement? Yes. Uh, so I'll use myself as an example. I remember many years ago before I came, into, came back into Nigeria, um, I used to be the uh, only female Agile coach, you know, within my sphere, my area, uh, my geographical region at that time. And um, I, I wasn't comfortable with that, so I ensured <laughs> that I changed that quickly. And I did so many things to change that quickly. And so when we look back today, that has changed. Great. And so coming into this environment, we're seeing, you know, a similar thing happening. But one thing I can tell you that when it comes to 
um, technology, software development, UI, UX, so many skills and stuff. I'm happy to announce that there's diversity there. There are lots of women in there. Um, in my field, you know, practicing agile, uh, we don't have many women leaders uh, in that area. Um, I sit as a chair of Agile Practitioners Association of Nigeria. Uh, I also uh, founded Agile Advisor, but um, we don't have many people, many women playing in that field, you know, uh, and also it's because a lot of women are still not aware. And so uh, we are constantly doing uh, things, uh, in initiatives and programs to improve that, right? Of course, uh, that is our watchword, diversity and inclusion, sure. right? And also we, we are making sure that the representation is, is balanced, if not more, because we know the imputes that a woman can actually bring, the difference that a woman can bring. Now, one of the questions that we want to ask before we let, I let you go has to do with um, bureaucratic corp um, corporate culture. Mm. How do they respond to the innovation that the Aja approach is all about? They do not respond. <laughs> it's very tough. It's very tough to let go. Uh, one thing is that uh, for men, well, mostly men, but majority of humans, our identity comes from our position. Okay. Right? And so when you bring Agile into an organization and you try to uh, change the culture, infuse an Agile culture, you have to change the culture, you have to change the structure, uh, people feel like they're going to lose their jobs. But I've never really seen what anybody... What do they? I've never seen anybody lose their job because okay. Agile came into the organization and there has to be a culture change or a structure change. So what happens is that the way of working is reorganized. Okay. And I like to say this, and I, don't, I know a lot of people are not happy when, when they hear this, is that your, on your resume, you can't say that your job is to manage 500 people. Mm. I, I, I don't see any value in that. When you step out outside of the shores of Nigeria, people don't even say that. You know, so what is, what, what, how would you say you would have 20 years experience managing people? I, I don't think that is possible. I don't think that is viable because people cannot be managed. You can't manage people and that's why we have all these micromanagers, we have all these problems of people having issues with their bosses, right? What you can do is act as a coach and facilitate work you know, tasks that are related to your subordinates. It's all about deliverables, so out, exactly. outcomes or outputs. Exactly. Which, which, which exactly. Way so that is what your focus should do. So I'm a, so you can say that you're a coach, you, are, you, you facilitate activities and work efforts with X number of people. Some organizations have woken up to that here in Nigeria and they are beginning to do that. But what I'm trying to say basically is that uh, nobody loses their job. Agile comes in and transforms and changes the way people are working, the way they are organizing, and most importantly, the output, you know, whatever value is that the organization is giving to the economy, to giving to true, users, giving true, to customers, true. Agile helps you to focus on that and increase that delivery, right? Increase that value continuously, repeatedly, over a period of does time, that so to, that you can that, be competitive. Does that, a, yeah, does that lead to an increase in market share as well? Exactly, so that you can be competitive. Okay, so that's the value itself that obviously Agile brings to the table. Exactly. Most businesses, most organizations, they release a product today, they make 30 billion naira. That is where it, that is where it ends. They spend that money, you know, opening uh, different um, branches, I'm not against expansion of business, you know. Sure. Uh, they now set up different departments within the organization. I'm not against that. But somebody must still continue to wear the hat of the product owner, whereby how can we continue, continuously improve this product? If we made 30 billion in our first sales, you can imagine if we improve that product, That's, the possibilities that extra are endless. Add -on, the, 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 the Value addition itself. Now, what comes to mind when you were explaining this has to do with who is more important, mm. the, the customer or the employee? Mm. Uh, is there supposed to be a balancing act here? There should be a balancing act. Both of them are important. And that okay. is what Agile, the, one of the values that Agile brings, allows you to improve employee engagement. Okay. And the way you work as an Agile team, you, 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 know, you are able to see your efforts on a daily basis. You're able to see what you've accomplished. And once you're able to see that, guess what? Your self-motivation improves. As human beings, right, agile, you know, 
kind of uh, speaks to our psyche, the psychological way we, we respond to, you know. So when I always say we're first humans before we even became any other exactly. thing. Exactly. I mean, so agile say. speaks to that. So as a person, I'm working with a team, and I don't need one boss that manages me to tell me that, hey, you're doing very well. I can see it. Mm -hmm. I'm working. The tools are showing me. My team, everybody, no, no, I, I can see it myself. Guess what? As a human, I'm going to push myself to the next level. I'm going to want to do more. I'm going to want to do more. Imagine if that is the mindset, the new mindset that each person in an organization working in a team begins to embrace. Now, I noticed you mentioned so much more about team. Mm. So, so th this is team over individuality? Yes. Or is the role of the individual within the team? So team over individuality, however, the role of the individual would also change. Okay. So it would move from me, 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 I, 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 a siloed way of thinking, a siloed way of working to we, True. you know, our team True. and collaborating. Regardless of what the organization is doing, people can still work in their individuality but collaborate because everybody who is in an organization, the janitor, the, the, the salesperson, the financial guy, the legal person, risk, you know, operations, procurement, you know, management. We're all working towards the same goal. True. You know, at the end of the day, we have to understand that there's a piece of us that has to collaborate to get to the finish line. And so when there's this individualism that takes over the concept of team collaboration, then there's a lot of issues that brew within that business. Mm. Well, what comes to mind sometimes, office politics. Does, Correct. Does, does Agile Mindset address it, office all it, it takes? It helps to reduce, okay. I, I won't say eliminate, right. okay. but reduce significantly, significantly in my personal opinion, okay. office politics and the bureaucratic stuff that you're talking okay. about. Strike. Now, one of the things that, that, that I also want us to touch on before we wrap up this particular interview has to also do with, are there statistics that shows any businesses that has adopted Agile Mindset that has failed? Or is it all good good and jolly stuff. <laughs> there are there are lots of uh, state of agile reports uh, lots of statistics from different organizations uh, some who are responsible for practice tools and the rest of it and yes there are um, many organizations uh, who have failed they have been able to work backwards to see why they failed okay you know and so there are all these lessons learned out there on YouTube articles white papers all over the place and we collect them and we share them with, with teams and with organizations so that they can, you know, learn. And so in Agile, I want to introduce the word shared practice. Okay. You know, uh, there, isn't, there is no best practice as a result mm. of what you're saying mm. because the, the, it's, it's an experiential uh, uh, approach whereby I'm going to try this. If it works, I'm going to keep it and improve upon it right i'm not going to have a fixed mindset i'm going to have a growth mindset mm. i'm going to be experimental about this and if i'm going to fail agile allows the opportunity to fail fast Great. failure is inevitable right so but even for growth as a matter of fact exactly but the ability to fail fast right there's a cycle in in one of the ways of working in agile there's something called scrum there's a two-week cycle like a sprint right if an organization ex, uh, adopts that for example they have two weeks to try that thing and see if they fail right as opposed to going on it for a year or for six months to now realize that oh we failed and try to re retrace oh, your skill two weeks lot. failure come on you can pick up yourself right and then re-strategize and re rearrange and then exactly. get to collaboration all right uh, i want to say a big thank you uh, uh mrs abiodun Oshoba, fondly called abby uh, this has been a very engaging section, I wish it would not end, but like with every good thing, uh, it must always come to an end. We hope perhaps in the future, when we extend this uh, invitation, you will honor us still as the case may be. Thank you very much for Thank being you, able to Steven. make it here. Uh, the viewers, please stay tuned. Uh, Business Matters continues after this brief break. As you've seen, 
adopting the other mindset has more positives as a matter of fact it's focused on a growth mindset that can help your business be successful and certainly profitable so the other mindset approach is the way for every single organization out there in nigeria to go make sure you look out for the professionals who know how to take you on that journey to ensuring that you become one of nigeria's most successful businesses out there this is so much we can take on this week's edition of the program. Please follow us on our social media handles. Uh, until I come here again, I remain Stephen Ipalabo Lawson. Bye for now.